What's up, folks? Um, Misty, wait a minute. Drinking some New Zealand IPA. Misty has stolen, my wife has stolen my flip cam. Uh, so I haven't used my phone. I've never used my phone to record any of my videos. So this may suck and I may have to redo it all, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Because I really wanted to get this part in here. Um, been working on my grain mill station. And uh, <clears throat> I know I briefly mentioned it in my last video about my uh, stuck spars. So I thought I would show you my progress thus far. And... Um, And here you go with the setup. Uh, an old uh, beat up microwave cart that we used to use and um, decided not to throw it away and I'm glad I didn't because uh, it's obviously came in handy. Uh, <clears throat> I will post these parts if you don't know about them. A lot of these guys and this idea was stolen from Homebrew Talk where I get most of my ideas from so props to those folks and that website again as always. Um, there you see the motor that come from, I think, uh, I, I'm not even going to try to attempt to remember the names. I'll put all the links down in the, the more info section. The, the motor was about 40 bucks, I believe. Uh, the Lovejoy couplings and spider gear that you see here and here and the little rubber bushing came from a different website. And then, of course, the body crusher. And... Basically, all I did was take a piece of metal that I got from work. It actually was already bent like this, so I didn't have to worry about that. I made me a pattern out of cardboard and transferred it over to this metal from the motor and uh, drilled my holes and slid the motor up on there and fastened her down. Uh, <clears throat> next thing I did on this, uh, as far as this part of the project, was to drill holes for the motor. I'm going to take all this off here in a minute and show you. I've got three uh, holes drilled, one here, one opposite of this corner, and one in the middle here. And I've left enough play in there to be able to, or I've made the holes big enough to where I could scoot this thing around a little bit because, you know, getting this thing lined up perfect is obviously almost impossible without having some play. Um, the body crusher is the standard body crusher. And uh, if you'll give me just a second, I'm going to get a couple of uh, things together here. I hope this is focusing good. It's going to suck if it don't. Um, be right back. All right. The barley crusher, uh, and I guess I should have taken a, maybe a video of this as I was doing it, but I try not to get too detailed. I tend to ramble on my videos, but anyway. Um, um, these little plates were mounted on the side of, you know, they went here in place of where this wood is. Uh, basically like this. Just take out the wood, uh, one on each side. And what I did was remove those, and of course that expose, exposes the rollers up under that you can see. And of course after I mounted my motor, which I had removed, uh, it came up to a certain height, so I had to adjust the height of my body crusher to meet the shaft of that motor. So I just measured up everything, pretty much eyeballed it as best I could and cut these two blocks of wood um, to mount on the side. And all I did was basically take and remove these plates, took those off, and mounted those two pieces of wood to the side of the body crusher at the correct height that would raise the body crusher up, you know, to meet, <clears throat> and raise the shaft up to meet the, um, the motor shaft. So, and one thing you'll have to note is... Uh, Here's the other side. Uh, it's no big deal for those screws. They were the smaller screws that hold this plate on. Well, on this side, these screws are longer. And the reason they're longer is because they go up against this adjustment right here, which is a roller, one of the rollers, you know, for the inside. And the way you adjust the gap, which I'll show you, the way you adjust that gap uh, which is preset at 0 .039 is by loosening these two screws and twisting this knob on either side. There's another one over here. And that moves that roller in and out and adjusts your gap on each side. Well, I just so happen to have some screws that replace these factory screws that were long enough to go through this wood and in through the, uh, 
the side of the boiler crusher here and, and go up against the uh, the adjustment here and make it good and tight and snug. I think I end up having to put a couple of washers here, and you can see they're still a little loose. I could probably add another piece or another washer or so, but it works out fine. And as you can see on the bottom, after I added those woods, I still had a, uh, those pieces of wood. I still had a gap right here. Uh, so all I did was take some thin sheet metal that I had laying around and cut a piece out, uh, actually two pieces, and wrapped around about an inch on each side and sc screwed in the wood. And that bad boy will sit right over the hole that I cut out. I just basically took the dimensions off the bottom of the barley crusher and transposed it to the top of the old cart here and put it in the middle and uh, cut it out with a jigsaw. And uh, like everything I do, it's not beautiful. It's not you know, I go for for functionality and or if that's a, even a word, it's functionality a word. But uh, <clears throat> everything I do is not the prettiest in the world, but it it works and so far so good. So basically, all I'll do now is uh, is line this thing up over my hole, and I will go from the bottom up under here and put a couple of wood screws probably one here and one here coming up from the bottom and the same thing on the opposite side and that'll hold this thing nice and tight against the uh, table here uh, after I get all that lined up and secured I'll put my motor back down and uh, like I say these holes are plenty big enough or just big enough to have a little bit of adjustment to uh, get everything lined up you know if it needs to go left or right or up well not up and down because up and down is pretty, pretty straight on but uh, left and right or backwards and forwards, I guess I should say this way. And that should get everything lined up enough to where I can tighten that down and uh, be ready to rock and roll. Um, the next thing I will do is I'm debating on whether to drill a hole here for my wiring and mount everything on the other side. But I think what I'm going to do is I have another project box like the one I built. And I'm going to show you that for my stir plate. That little project box and this is a uh, motor that requires a capacitor so that project box is project box and I just realized it may not be big enough to sit over here but I'll figure all that out that project box may hold this um, capacitor and my three-way toggle switch because I'm gonna wear it up for uh, forward and reverse in case I have in case it binds up, uh, obviously I can reverse it. So there you go. Uh, that screw in there is going to sit back like it needs to be, but it's all out of whack anyway. Uh, maybe by the next time you see this video, I'll have everything mounted down, and um, maybe my box mounted, or I have figured out how I'm going to mount the capacitor and the and the switch and do the wiring and uh, get this bad boy going. Um, probably won't brew again for another. I was going. I was thinking about brewing this coming weekend, but with uh, basketball season and Duke playing, there's no way I'm gonna brew this weekend. So probably uh, the following weekend I'll brew and I'll have everything surely squared away by then. What's up, folks? Um, well, the grain mill is pretty much done. Um, and again, I apologize. I hope this video quality comes out pretty good because I'm using my phone and uh, I have loaded the first few videos on my computer and they looked okay but the, video, the audio didn't sound too good but anyway I'm gonna give this a shot um, as you can see the uh, body crusher has been mounted to the little cart and basically all I did was centered up over the lines that I had pre-marked uh, where I cut my hole that you just saw and I went from underneath and put two wood screws on each side. Uh, one here, one here, and then the same thing on the opposite side. So it's passing down good, not going anywhere with the seven pound hopper. Uh, next thing I did was line up my motor, which you saw I already had the uh, heel drills hold, heel drilled. Uh, got those fastened down, I had enough play to get everything lined up good, and got my Lovejoy coupling all lined up, all that worked out really well. So um, everything's uh, lined up good. Uh, I had another project box, and uh, the cord I used, as you can see, it's plugged in here. is uh, 
is actually a cord that comes off of a um, computer monitor or, or computer tower, you know, like a normal power cord for those type things. And I just cut the ends off of it. And as you can see, I mounted my box uh, up and down because it wouldn't. I didn't have enough room right here to lay it flat, which was no big deal. And it's just enough room in there. Um, and if you want this wire, wiring diagram, uh, I'm not going to put it on the blog post, but I'm um, on the blog post on the uh, YouTube video. But if you're wanting to build this, I mean, I got the wiring diagram from Homebrew Talk, uh, which really was pretty simple to figure out anyway. But uh, it's just a uh, uh, double pole, double throw switch, and let me see here. I think I, yeah, I got the Radio Shack number. Um, double pole, double throw switch with center off, and it's wired up with the power going into the center, and then off the two legs. I don't know if you can even see that in dark. It goes to the capacitor, and then it's wired up with the motor, and everything's crammed in there, nice and neat. And I've got a cover that'll go over this, and uh, this bad boy, uh, at least it runs. I haven't put any grain in it yet, which I'm going to try here, here shortly. And like I say, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. There's a few gaps here and there, but it'll be fine. I don't see any problems with it. Uh, it don't have to be perfect, in my opinion. But um, anyway, there's the uh, power plugged in, and uh, of course, center is off if I flip it backwards away from the mill. It runs in reverse, and that's in case uh, I get some kind of, you know, if something gets stuck or whatever, it'll run in reverse, and then I've got it wired, so um, if I flip it towards the mill, that's normal, which is going clockwise, and I don't know how loud that is, but there you go, uh, little grain mill station, be able to set my bucket right up under there, and I may, uh, I've seen some guys take uh, some sort of duct work and uh, fasten to the inside and let it come down to your bucket. I don't know if I'll do all that. Just kind of see how it goes and how big a mess it makes with the dust and everything. But uh, I'm going to try this bad boy out and throw a little bit of grain in there. I know uh, some folks um, with this particular motor say they have uh, problems with the uh, mill starting. If they, Basically, they have to start the mill and then pull the grain in. If they put the grain in, and then try to start the mill. There's not enough torque in the motor to uh, to get it going, but um, which is no big deal. I don't care. Uh, it's not that hard to turn the motor on and then add the grain, right? So I'm gonna try this thing out. And uh, <clears throat> my batch sparge problem um, from all the reading I've been doing, I think I'm gonna try some malt conditioning instead of trying rice holes first. So I'm gonna condition my malt and. Uh, with water and see how that goes. So I may do that in the video uh, next or sometime in the future. But there you go, Jake's grain mill station. Uh, any questions or comments, feel free to lay them on me.